Today we're going to talk about the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. Now this board is very similar to the SKR version 1.3 but does have a lot of different changes. So I'm going to go through the ones that I know so far. So to start with, we have our power supply. This is our power in. It can do either 12 or 24 volts. Then we have our board power for our heat bed. Then we have extruder 0 and extruder 1. Now something new about this board is we have one fan port, then we have another fan port, then we have another fan port, and another fan port for cooling because we need lots of things to cool on the board. And then we have our traditional stepper ports that come with the SKR. They allow diag pins and uh, sense pins so that we can use various types of steppers, be it the A4988 or the DRV8825 or a SPY by TMC or a UART. So what I also need to explain is they have new stepper configurations for the motors. These are closed loop pins. I'll have to do some investigation on how they work. Also, we have our normal jumper pin. Right now it's set to board power in order to turn it on. So we want to change that to 5 volts. So I'm going to lift the jumper up and move it over to the next two pins right here so that we can power it with 5 volts. We also have our traditional end stops. We have our X minimum, our X maximum, our Y minimum, our Y maximum, our Z minimum, and our Z maximum. Then we have our LCD connections for our traditional LCDs. So we have EXP1 and EXP2. We also have a BL touch set of pins for our servo pins and also the sensor pin right here for when it touches. Then we have a LCD or LED lighting set of pins. We also have, uh, let's see, our spy pins over here. And then we have I2C pins right here. Then we have our TFT pins right here. Our reset pins, or excuse me, our reset button. And we also have a Wi-Fi connection right here. Then we have our thermistor ports right here for either two hot ends and a heat bed or maybe something else. Then we have our USB connection right here. And then we have our micro SD or TF drive. That covers about 90% of this board. There may be new functionality that I'll discover as we go. But I also have to point out that the steppers now, you don't need to split them anymore because you have two Z steppers that are broken out on the Z axis over here for steppers. And of course, if I haven't already said it, this is the X stepper, the Y stepper, E0 and E1. So in order to load it for the very first time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the micro SD card and we're gonna place this in an adapter and place it inside the computer. So you may hear a beep, but just to let you know, I purchased this board with my own money and no one's paying me to do this tutorial. And I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description to help you find it or help support me by purchasing it. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you is that this is the micro USB that we installed in the computer so that we could actually see the drive. As you can see, it says firmware.cur or cursor type file. Note the time, this is when it was actually produced and shipped. Now, when we actually load our firmware, it's gonna be firmware.bin in lower case. But in order to do that, we need an integrated developer environment. So we need to go over to our web browser, but before I show you anything, this is the address of the instructions for the board. It can walk you through driver issues, how to load them, 
how things work. It's the operating instructions for the motherboard. So in order to get the developer environment, we're gonna go for VS Code, and we're gonna go to Download. So we're gonna click on this, and I'm operating on Windows 10. So I'm gonna do the 64-bit installer in my case. You'll have to check your system to see if it's 32-bit or 64-bit when you do your install. So I'm gonna click on that to download it. While that's downloading, I'm going to download the Marlin firmware. So we're gonna type marlinfw.org and press enter. Then we're gonna to go to download. Now this is the latest release, but our board definition is not in there. So we need to go to down here. This is a development release, which means that it's under development. So if you have any issues, you can report them with this right down here for reporting issues link. But we're just gonna download for now. And it looks like VS Code is finished downloading. So we're gonna install that by double clicking. And we're gonna accept the agreement, click next then next again, then next again. Now we're gonna say create a desktop icon. And we're also going to open with code. So we're gonna click next and also add to path is selected. And then next for install. And while that's going on, we're going to unzip our Marlin firmware by extract all. So we're gonna extract that. And we're going to click Finish and Launch Visual Studio Code. Now in Visual Studio Code, we need to add an extension. So we're going to click here. And we're going to do a search on Platform I.O. And the very top of the list is the IDE. So we're going to click Install. Now it may ask you to install other things. So I'm gonna show you real quick. Some of these things might be recommended to you in the bottom right hand corner, but for now we're not gonna worry about those. So we're gonna click on Platform I.O. And I'm gonna show you around real quick. We have our open project. This is a folder. So in order to do this, I'm gonna click on Open Project. I'm gonna reduce this down so you can see better. And I'm gonna click on the downloads folder where we downloaded it. Now it's Marlin Dev 1, or excuse me, 2.1.x. And then again, so it's two folders deep. Then we're gonna click open. And as you can see, it's opened our environment right here. So we're gonna expand this folder out. And as you can see now, we have options where we can build or compile. We can also do an upload, but currently we're doing it via the micro SD. So we're going to click on the Marlin folder and we're going to go to the source folder. And inside here, we're going to go to the core folder and then open up boards.h. What we're going to do is we're going to do a search on SKR. And as you can see right here, it's got board underscore big tree underscore skr underscore v1 underscore 4 that's what we want to copy and then we want to minimize this folder but we want to look in the pins folder real quick because we're going to have a unique set of pins so it's lpc 1768 and then right here we have our board definition so we're going to click on that and as you can see all our pins are outlined for us to where they are on the board this will be more important in future tutorials, but I wanted to show you where it was so you understand how your signal pins are set up on the board with this file. So I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to minimize that, minimize pins, and minimize source. And I'm going to go to configuration.h. Now I'm going to do a search on motherboard. And what we have here is board underscore ramps underscore one four underscore EFB. I'm going to highlight that and paste what we just copied. 
And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to change the serial port to negative one for now. But in order to verify that we're doing a change, we're going to change our end stop. So I'm going to do a search on end stop. And as you can see, this is our end stop section. Down below here, there's something to invert the logic of our pins. So in this case, I'm going to select the X minimum end stop. And I'm going to change false to true. So it's going to give us the opposite answer of what we're looking for. So now that we have that changed, we're going to go to platform platform.io.ini. And our default environment is not for this chipset being the Mega AT Mega 2560. We need to change that to the LPC 1768, which is our chipset. And then to compile, we're going to click right here. And as you can see right here, it's probably going to download stuff that we need for our actual build. And then it's going to build or compile our source code. Okay, now the compilation is completed. It says that it was succeeded and it took three minutes and five seconds. So up here, it says LPC 1768, which is our chipset. So we know it succeeded there. So we need to go to .pio folder and expand that out. Then go to build, then to LPC 1768. Now we need to open this folder. So we're gonna do reveal and explorer. And we're going to go to the subfolder, and here is our actual build. So to load it on our SD card, we need to actually right-click on it and then say send to SD card. So if we go back to the SD card, you can see now that firmware.bin is loaded. And note the time in comparison to the other date. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the card and install it back in the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the micro SD from the adapter and we're going to place it back in the TF driver SD micro SD controller connection here. And in order to load it, we need power. So we're going to connect the big side of our USB serial cable here. And then we're going to connect the small side to the computer. And you're going to hear a beep. And as you can see, there'll be some flashing lights on it showing that it's actually loading. Okay, now that we know it's loaded, we can see that the firmware is updated to today's date. So to test it, we're going to go over to Pronterface, which I have on my desktop, and we're going to go to the Print Run directory, and then we're going to click on Pronterface. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the printer, and now it says connecting, and the printer is now online. So to confirm that we actually uploaded firmware, we're going to type M119 to check the status of the end stops. And as you can see, with no connections connected, two of the three say triggered and one says open. The X minimum is what we changed from false to true. And that's why it says open. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.